morning, everybody. Thank you for the introduction, James. Yes, it is 4 a.m. here. So it's pretty, pretty early. So we are something a few hours behind. Um, um, welcome, everybody, to the fourth decode, if I remember right. So um, I joined uh, some of them already, and it's a pleasure to be back here. So let me just see if technology works, at least on my side this morning. I assume you can all see my, my slide deck now. So um, the positive thing here of being global or of um, having being online in a global conference is I didn't have to fly to the Philippines. Uh, so it saves me something like one day coming in and uh, also one day coming back. Uh, one of the disadvantages, it's not as interactive as if I would be on site, having coffee, chat, or, in, uh, or discussions with you guys. I'm very sorry this time it's not working like that. Um, but it's also a little bit different in the presentation because I don't get any feedback from you if um, things are going well or if something is, is wrong or if you have any questions. But we have a, um, a discussion forum and I saw you guys already making heavy use of it when we had some technical glitches at the beginning. So if there are any questions or if there is anything you want to know, please drop it in the, in the Q&A or in the discussion room. I will not be able to re uh, respond here right away, but we're gonna follow up on all questions later on. Um, you have the option, uh, the opportunity to ask questions to the panel and closing, as well as if there are questions that are directly related to me, the organizers will forward it and can re respond via email or, or get in contact with you. Good so far. So topic today is game changer. As the introduction said already, my job is to predict, the, to let the forward-looking threat research team, we are predicting the far future. Um, when we talk about the, the, the pandemic, it's very near future. In fact, things are changing here every, every day, hourly nearly. Um, the latest news say that we have found or we are close to having a vaccine or stuff like that. So everything is very, very dynamic. So, but. If you're gonna look at news, if you're gonna look a uh, newspaper or listen to radio, um, the pandemic is the main topic, after, besides election. Uh, but uh, um, election is not a topic that I'm gonna cover here. Um, I hear, I talk about, no, I'm not talking about infection rates, I'm not talking about seven day infection index or uh, hospital cap capacity, homeschooling or lockdown light, these are all these buzzwords. Um, but the pandemic is much more than only the emergency room, the masks and the ventilators. Uh, the pandemic is changing the way how we live. The pandemic is changing the way how we work. You all called it already in the opening chat, the new normal. Um, so um, there's a lot of things ongoing, uh, but uh, the pandemic also has some side effects uh, like uh, fear, uh, uncertainty, doubts, rumors. Um, and it's a catalyst. It's a catalyst to speed up digitization because people are, are working remote and they're gonna use latest technology just to continue their work and to ensure uh, that services are operating, that information is flowing, that you are still running business. So I want to talk to you about uh, this the next 25 minutes, just an introduction for this, for this conference. Oops, so now I'm running into my technical glitch. Next slide. Let's see, I have a problem with the mouse because I cut myself during the weekend, so I'm a little bit handicapped, sorry for that. So starting with the topic that you all know, or most of you know, is um, working from home. In Germany in April, it's the only number that I found, so sorry, I have to make the reference to my home country. Um, in April, we had a working from home ratio of 34% of the employees working from home. Compared to that, in December, we had 2%. So roughly one third of the people, and I'm going to take that as, as for all the industrial countries, one third of the people currently or during the last nine months were experiencing working from. So you all already experienced with video conference, you are just in the, in the middle of one. You were talking about technical glitches. You said, oh, there's a ring light. So some of you are very, very sophisticated. Some of you already know this, this pretty well. Others are just making their first steps into this new world. But if you have noticed what happens to the market, um, this video conference boom um, leads to a massive demand on webcams, microphones, and other stuff. I bought my webcam here something like uh, one year ago. It's a Logitech uh, 930, and I paid about 120 euros for that. In March, when my colleagues wanted to buy the same camera, I recommended the camera, um, the Amazon asked 190 euros. 
So for a one-year-old consumer product, we saw a price increase of nearly 60%. Huh? Well, there is some benefits of working from home. Um, it's, it's not convenient to commute, especially if you are in Manila and stuck in, in traffic. Uh, so there's a, that's something positive, uh, but people pay a price for that. Kids are home. You can see here somebody working from home. You uh, have to take care of the, of the family. We do homeschooling we, while we work or we have video conferences. The dog barks, I have two dogs here, or the, the postman is ringing at the door. Uh, then somewhere in between, we have to stop and do cooking. Uh, so this working from home needs a lot of self-discipline. Not everybody is, is ready for that. We also need um, to coordinate better. For example, when, when I want to have uh, a discussion and uh, at the same time in the Philippines, it's, it's lunchtime, uh, um, no chance to reach somebody. Uh, so we have to we have to be much more much more um, disciplined with work than working in, in local environment. Also, the team bonding is slowly shifting away because we don't meet the people. I just had it in the, in the pre call for this conference a quick chat with Melissa, and um, we both agree that meeting people from time to time is really nice. And we really miss that because we can do um, interaction personally, we can exchange personal information. If you're colleagues, you might discuss what's the latest stuff, uh, stuff ongoing in the company. So there's a lot of things that normally happen in our daily interaction that are currently very, very limited. And that has an impact to people. Companies try to compensate that with team building online or with online gaming. Um, Trend Micro has some parties trying to, run, to, to keep this, to, to fill this gap. Um, but whenever we do, let's say, an online party or online game, we do something like spend extra time. We do not only work, we also go over time uh, and we eat up the bandwidth at this moment. That brings me to the next topic because when working from home, one of the biggest problem is bandwidth. So during the pandemic also, we suffer from, from shopping. We do not have the opportunity to go to a restaurant. We do not have the opportunity to go um, in a mall and make our Christmas shopping that is upcoming or ever. So what we're gonna do instead, we're gonna do order delivery. So he is a local representative of that, uh, but um, um, this, this globally, the, the delivery business is, is ramping up massively. So when we go to go shopping, what are you going to do? We're going to replace that now by, by Amazon. And as we are not allowed to go, go to the gym or if you are not allowed to play basketball, what are you going to do? We're going to meet with friends uh, online and we're going to do virtual tournaments of FIFA soccer or we're going to do online tournament and games or we're going to stream gym classes. Some gyms do uh, even offer a local uh, gym classes or you're going to select a session from YouTube. Um, if you're honest, what happens at the moment is nearly 70% of our activities go online. You can even do stupid things like, as I told you before, I hit my, I hit my finger here, put it in the band. So I'm, I'm, to, to compensate the, the online work, I do wood turning. And even now uh, shop my wood online. Can you see the postman delivering two or three cartons, each of them 50 kilograms with wood? Something that... It, personally, even myself would not have expected something like a, half, uh, a year ago. But all that things happens um, working as well as our home life, as well as our homeschooling order in the same local network um, at the same time, sometimes even with shared devices. Of course, for me, and uh, James mentioned in the introduction, I'm living in an experimental smart home, so I have something like 70 IP devices and uh, much more that are not connected to IP, but via, via other radio signals. Um, in the most houses that I know, they have less than five IP addresses. So sometimes all these things like job or work or um, online schooling or using Amazon or going to Facebook all happen on the same family PC. But it's not only us as an individuals, we all have families. The young people stay home, of course, because of a lockdown. The elderly is because they are in a higher risk for, for their health. Um, in, stay in senior homes, at least very, very popular in Germany or in, in the rest of the world. Um, and these senior homes currently are also in lockdown mode. So the grandparents are 
I would say imprisoned. They are locked away. So they are socially isolated. Some of these elderly homes even have stopped all their social activities. So the people are really sitting in their apartments all day long, waiting and waiting and waiting. So what are families doing? They upgrade. They upgrade grandpa to grandpa 2.0 giving them internet enabled devices. So it's in that case, what you can see here, it's a mobile telephone. Uh, others are upgrading them with a uh, touch pads, uh, with, uh, with the iPad or stuff like that, just because it's easier, more convenient for them. And all these elderly people right now, and we we'll see that in our stats are joining or have joined the internet during the, uh, during the last six months. Um, but it's not only the unexperienced elderly that go online now. If everything is going online, uh, then also the people who had no choice before, who had no ability. Um, if you have kids that are want to go to school, you need to be online today. There is no way out. If you look now at the PC sales numbers in, UK, in US, we see a massive growth of PCs, while in the past the number of PCs was declining. If you look to India, Oxy, one of the most uh, well-known resellers of used um, mobile devices, they saw a spike of 110% in sales only in July. So everybody is going to the internet. And we see two things here. The people who are, are very internet savvy upgrades. They upgrade their hardware and they upgrade the number of devices to stay in contact with the families. And also there is a huge wave of unexperienced users that you're gonna see in the internet. Oops, okay, move the mouse. So the next thing that is happening at the moment is after working from home, we have realized that people can work from home, but being home in the home office all the time is boring. So people started to, especially in summer, to move out into the garden and work from the garden. And they realized, wow, it works, no problem. Expect there's a little bit too bright sun, so video conference is not that convenient. Yeah, but they learned working from the park is possible or working from everywhere as long as there is good connectivity. So something that you also see, if you look into the, the sales numbers of mobile providers, everybody who has a mobile phone is upgrading his data uh, rate at the moment. Why? Because people peer their laptop uh, and go with the laptop via the mobile into the internet, as long as there is a good enough 4G connectivity. From an IT admin point of view, there is no difference between working from home via VPN or working from a recreation vehicle and from a wonderful beach. Um, in some jobs, especially when they are in a classical office or IT, a physical presence is no longer mandatory. And even the pandemic was gone away. People will not forget this lesson. That means for you as IT savvy um, operators, as specialists, your company network is gone. It's vaporized. The times where everybody's reporting back to the office and you had to defend the network in your office has stopped. Come to an end. It will not come back. Huh? You now need to defend nomadic employees. They are spread out everywhere. They use different networks that you have zero information about. And they are shared with an un unknown amount of other users or an unknown amount of other devices at the same time. As I mentioned before, in worst case, they even share the same device in, in, in a home where everybody is only the one family PC. So the virus has not only changed your personal life, the virus is changing your work environment, your personal work environment at this moment, right now. Look at here, these are stock uh, reports from one week ago. Any idea who these companies are? Can you make a guess? Just let me see in the chat if somebody has an idea who these people are, or who these companies are. If you have any ideas, no ideas? Okay, so here you go. You're gonna see on the left hand side the uh, chart from Amazon and from Delivery Hero. 
And I'm going to tell you that uh, see this, this charts are seven days old because something happened yesterday. Yesterday, delivery here, for example, dropped something like uh, 20%. The reason for that is if the vaccine is working, then delivery is or food delivery is no more that important. So the future predictions for for these companies are going is going down at the moment. But people are realizing that until everybody gets uh, vaccinated, until the rollout happens globally, we least at least one more year. Yeah, so definitely um, the stock will not go down have, uh, massively. There is still enough business for this type of companies. Um, on the right hand side, when you see the massive drop and the no recovery, let us see Boeing, the biggest producer or the largest big, uh, airplane producer of the world, as well as Exxon Mobil. I was very, very surprised when I looked into that. Uh, and started thinking, what the hell is happening here? Well, you see the world is undergoing a seismic shift. We are now living in a world where it's much more important to successfully deliver parcels to people at home than selling oil. The capability to serve users remotely is a mission critical business value today. So the key takeaway here is companies not only need to enable remote employees, but also remote customers. Business must speed up and need to be reliable even in, in conditions like remote delivery. No? The, these services, these online order, this online delivery that also needs to be secured very, very, very different than we did in the past. I'm gonna bring it to that soon. So how do companies enable their, their employees? Oh, you all know VPN, you all ran already into the problem of concurrent licenses. Sorry, into the time check here. Um, you had maximum of parallel sessions in your firewall, you ran into internet bandwidth problems. You all know these things already, so let's skip it. You are professionals. Instead of let, let, me, let me highlight two things to you that you might miss or you have not seen yet. Um, the one thing is, um, very HR related. Have you ever tried to coordinate a big project via Slack or Zoom? You need to deploy a complete new culture for communication. Not everybody is extroverted. Not everybody is sharing his opinion um, openly in a, in a Zoom call, uh, especially in the Philippines where you have a more, um, more um, careful and polite communication culture. If you have one person in the Zoom call, who is very dominant, you, know, you, you don't get the, the results that you are used to. Look at that Zoom meeting that you have here. Uh, how many, there's 25 people participating. That is uh, one of our, our team calls. How many people do you think are really active? Well, let me share with you. <laughs> Some people here are reading their emails. Um, one person is not even at the computer. And one guy at this moment was talking about two minutes already, but uh, um, he forgot to switch on his microphone. So he was very, very engaged, but nobody could listen to him. Do you as supervisors or managers have the skill to sense what is ongoing remotely with your staff? Huh? Sorry. One, one other thing I want to just came to my mind when you're going to work um, remotely for your company, which is very easy. Huh? That means that the same employee can also work remotely for another company. So the Corona impact here is that um, the workforce market is changing. When you are a remote worker and you can work from your home or from your RV car um, and you, you switch your employer, let's say to another IT company that is to say located in Australia or located in Singapore or located in in US, um, you do not have to move. You only need to have a different login account and you can, can continue working. In times where IT staff is very rare, limited resource, um, that is a big threat for, for every company. So here you as managers need to have very, very good HR skills. You need to have, be very sensitive and very much care taking for your employees. Otherwise you're gonna run into a massive turnover problem. Okay, 
Here is our, my cloud slide. There is no IT presentation without clouds. Here's my clouds. So everybody says COVID is pushing big into uh, digitization and they all move forward to cloud. That's okay. Um, let's just look at how we're gonna, how, what it really means because I'm not sure if everybody is aware. So let's start when, when we went into lockdown, we still have that in, in our office in the Philippines. Uh, IT is local to keep the backup infrastructure running uh, and the workers are remote from home. That is the default setup. Uh, but admins also sometimes or very often, I see that more and more do not report to office, uh, but also work from home. So far, that is good. You can manage a remote server. That is the first skill that I think a lot of companies have acquired that skill already. The next thing is, okay, if the servers are remote, let's virtualize these servers. And this virtualization is, let's say, not very uh, cost efficient. The next step then immediately is, okay, let's move servers to containers. And there is no difference from an admin if he's gonna work from home, remote uh, managing a container-based server that is in his local data center, versus manager remote uh, managed container running in a cloud infrastructure. And when I say cloud, it doesn't mean AWS, it can also be Azure, Oracle, or whatever, there's no difference. In fact, even criminals are doing the same thing. Uh, it's just they do not host at Azure or, or Oracle, they host very often the bulletproof hosters. Uh, but uh, that move in the industry is something normal. It's just that um, um, COVID is, pushing that, making that split faster because companies don't want their admins to be exposed to the virus. Um, but there's something else happening. Have you, when you, have, when you have managed all these servers in the cloud, you're gonna realize that you can save a lot of costs if you switch to serverless technologies. Think about AWS Lambdas. Um, there is no need to manage the containers, the virtualization platform or the servers. You can simply focus on the, on the running application and that's all you need to do. Well, we are in a security conference, so I, know, I assume that you know this already, but have you ever considered how do you implement security here? How do you know that your Lambda service is secure? What if criminals steal your Lambda or modify it and take data out of the Lambda? Have you ever considered that? Your firewall skills, your Zeeb system, your access controls, they are all based on the old network model based on the perimeter model, based on ensuring that authorized personnel is sitting at the keyboard. But your authorized uh, um, personnel now is sitting remote. You do not see them at the keyboard anymore. And this thing is growing. So I've just used Lambda as a sample. Do you know that Amazon currently has 175 different products and services offering from computing, storage, networking, database, analytics, uh, application services, whatever. And this thing is growing very, very fast. That is at the end of the day where, um, where the security needs to kick in. We need to have, we need to ensure uh, that people who are, are using the service are the people who claim they are, they, they want, they be. Um, so we need to go for something like, and that is what I strongly recommend, this is my major takeaway for you, is, we need to implement a zero trust policy. I'm gonna explain, explain it in next step. Huh? But the way how you operate your network, the way how you manage your users in the past has to change and it has to change today because the criminals are looking at this already. It's not only on the servers who are gonna change, it's also the desktop is gonna change. You all showed me in the chat before that you're already Zoom savvy. Before Zoom, we all used Cisco WebEx. Um, Zoom became one of the most popular services um, during the pandemic. I just see the time. Um, because um, it's very, very convenient, but it's not very safe. The new gorilla now is uh, MS Teams which comes for free if you switch to Office uh, 360 yeah, from Microsoft. Um, so that is very nice that you see more and more uh, secure Zoom call, um, Teams calls up um, coming. One of the problems here is um, the rollout of Office 365 is not that easy as it looks like, it's very complex. And you know that complexity is the enemy of security. One misconfiguration and you have a massive data leak. 
Uh, so I recommend if you're going to do this rollout, be careful, be patient, and do not rush. Another tool that is very, very popular at the moment is Slack. Uh, so it's an online collaboration tool, it's uh, instant chats, uh, and it has a lot of uh, um, capabilities to be extended with uh, apps, there are a lot of APIs and connectors for that. One thing that I want you to take away here is if you allow an app to access a channel, the app and the developers of the app have full access to your workspace. So if you add, let's say, a remote calendar, if you access whatever, you open your communication channel. If you share Slack uh, with others outside of the company, you more or less open the, the big gate. Well, there's new collaboration tools also upcoming. Zoom, Teams, or Slack are just the beginning. Um, in October, Facebook released uh, the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, and uh, there are services like uh, virtual meeting platforms, like Spatial or whatever. And everybody says, yes, we can meet again. Great, we don't have to do the stupid video calls anymore. Hold a second. I have a um, um, Quest device here with me. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, meeting with a virtual reality is nice, but you cannot take meeting minutes because your hands are busy. And you you were looking in a virtual space, but you crash your coffee here on the table or you hit your knee because you don't see where, what your environment is. So the, the virtual reality technology is not there yet. Or in other words, even the technology works, you will need to work with uh, Teams, Slack, and um, others a few more, a few more years, no, more, more, let's say months. OK. Come to something that is for me very related to the home office. You want to see here a classical home office connected to the cloud servers where criminals are, where you have your online services, where you have your social media, where your company is connected. And you're going to work as default via VPN to the company. As this all is a mixed network, yeah? you also not only have your remote worker here, you also have the kids doing social networks, you have your your spouse doing online gym or whatever, they are all sharing the same router. They're all sharing the printer. If you have a hacker in that environment, uh, the hacker can come in via social network, um, go uh, permanent on your printer or on your router or on, in fact, a PC, and from there sniff all the network traffic that you have. Uh, or you can monitor what you're printing is access to your NAS. And in worse condition, you can even, if misconfigured, uh, via your router back into the company. The problem here is you as an admin you or as a responsible IT specialist, you have no right to roll out company's policy into the home office, which means if you deploy, let's say there's a malware incident, you make a cleanup, you might clean up the wrong machine. You might mess up with a, with a computer that doesn't belong to the company. Who is legally responsible for that? Even go worse, you're gonna see the car here in the car park. Uh, let's assume that's a wonderful Tesla. No, it doesn't look like a Tesla, but it, let's, let's assume it is a Tesla. Huh? You're gonna do a rollout of uh, company policies and you're gonna mess up with that um, car charger which is connected to the internet. And you got to start a fire in the garage. Have you ever considered these type of problems? Other topics, I just want to highlight so that you start thinking about it. How do you enforce a backup? How do you restore a backup of, of company PC hardware in, in the smart home? So what if you hit with your activities, the life of these people? Is there some legal policies in the company? Has uh, C-Levels even considered this type of problems? Um, and again, I'm assuming here a smart home with multiple devices. Uh, so you have exactly the same problem with, uh, with uh, one device. If you have only one device, you're going to do your work, and then someone, one of the kids goes there, opens a the browser, while you are just off for an hour uh, and start surfing the internet. You're running all through these problems. Um, of course, the laptop is encrypted, uh, but um, you know what? Kids find out passwords very, very fast. Uh, so I strongly recommend another takeaway for you. Ensure that you have a two-factor authentication or a biometric authentication. Not only having a password, but also sending a text message to your mobile where you confirm that you are the right person in front of the keyboard. 
As we are talking about politics, uh, one of the major topics we're going cloud that I hear from all the companies from all the states is data sovereignty. Hardware, um, no. The, um, countries want to ensure that the information stays within their, their um, area of influence. Companies want to ensure that data stay in their area of influence. If you have remote workers, how do you ensure that uh, people are not printing stuff uh, and this data goes uh, out of the company? So we mentioned before already zero trust. And let me introduce it here very, very quickly. Um, zero trust is an approach 20, 10 years old, originally by Forrest, is a network uh, model, which at the end of the day says it's consequently focused on who is allowed to access the data. Uh, so a zero trust model means that no user uh, who wants to have access to resources or to services in the network by default is trusted. Every access, every single access needs to be authenticated by uh, individually for each, for each login. So the login one time with Active Directory and then all the resources are available to you, that must stop. In a time where you don't know who's on the keyboards, you all the time need to double check and say, are you the right person? Here at Trend, for example, you're gonna use do, uh, Duo for two-factor authentication. If I want to go to the HR system, even if I'm in the network, I'm gonna log into the HR system, get my new, uh, I have to log in again. I get the text message, I have to respond to it. Um, and by that, we can ensure that it's at least the owner of the keyboard is the same owner of the, uh, of the mobile, which in that case is always me. Um, you can also, on top of that, uh, later on, uh, at access brokers or data leak protection and other technology, which is more endpoint and policy related, we're going to end up with SASE, which means the secure access uh, service edge. Uh, the new buzzword in the block, uh, start simple, start with thinking in um, zero trust, start in monitoring what's going to happen in your network and ensure that you have dual factor authentication in place. So very, very quick coming to an end here, um, the social impact. We see change in society. We are in lockdown, we are stressed. We are not allowed to travel. We had to cancel our PTO. What does it happen? What does it make with us? Well, international organizations like UNHCR or uh, European Union or even the states like um, the government of the United States, people are losing trust in these organizations. The people do not uh, trust their governments. They do not trust police. We see rallies here all over Europe, people demonstrating against uh, the virus, the, the activities triggered by the governments, as well as all kind of um, conspiracy messages that happening right now. Um, I've never seen so many stupid and crazy fake news like the virus doesn't exist. It's coming from China. It's a, just a flu. Bill Gates tries to rule the world. A lot of stupid things we're going to hear here, but people are jumping for that message. They are sitting home, they are isolated, they are losing their social environment, their contacts, yeah? and then there is some hot news, like the new vaccine is available. What happens? Everybody's clicking on that URLs that you're going to offer to them. We are in heaven. We are in a perfect storm for criminals. Yeah? So we're gonna see a heavy misuse of, of information. And we also see already heavy misuse of latest, latest technology to fight people who have different opinions. I'm gonna talk about artificial intelligence just here at the, at the very end of my session. Huh? Artificial intelligence, machine learning huh? is already available on consumer grade. We're gonna see AI enabled photo editors. We're gonna see AI enabled video editing software like Descript or Luminar, the bad guys right now are discussing and doing experiments how to misuse artificial intelligence. Next week, we, uh, FEMICRO will release together with the UNICRI, the United Nations International uh, Crime Research Institute, and with Europol, that is the organization of all police in Europe, a report about misuse of AI by criminals. You see, Fake news, you just have a sample here, we're gonna see fake pictures. Um, at the moment, we already see um, projects like GPT-3, where you just simply give two or three words, and this artificial intelligence is writing an essay. 
We are experimenting right now. You're going to give this artificial intelligence three emails from your C-level executives. They are capable to write BEC, business emails, compromise stuff uh, in a way that is impossible, impossible to detect if that is human or not. Keep in mind, if that happens, while your CFO is working from home or working from his recreation village, uh, vehicle, it's very, very hard to validate, is this really written by you or is it written by somebody else? So we rely more and more based on the pandemic on digital information. The old analog communication channels like the, like the office are gone at the moment. So securing the confidentiality and the integrity of these digital informations must be your highest priority. So to summarize, the pandemic is not a computer virus. It does not spread over your network but it changes the way how the users are using computers. We are no more in bring your own device er uh, times. We are in the area of working from everywhere. That means the paradise of my company, my network, my server is gone. It will not come back. The pandemic acts like the catalyst. It speeds up changes, factor 10 to 20. Yeah? And security teams need to run fast to keep up with that speed. Customers remotely require new services and remote users, new security models. Digitization plans suddenly get pushed by executives, new communication and collaboration tools get introduced in a hurry. At the same time, overall, the world around us gets more and more hectic and stressful. At the same time, the life for the criminal gets easier. It is time to elevate, it's time to upgrade. Welcome to Decode 2020.